Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and I'm super excited to share with you a few new features that are available immediately in ClickSense Cloud. Now keep in mind, since ClickSense Cloud is on a continuous release cycle, when the features are completed by R&D, they're implemented immediately in ClickSense Cloud, and you could use them right away, versus waiting until one of our five releases per year is available. So the first feature I want to talk about is segment colors. Segment Colors is a styling option that is available within measures that are created within our master items library. So to give you an example, I already have a chart created. In this case, I'm using a combo chart and I'm going to measure temperature and rainfall. So I already have the temperature already displayed as a line. And what I'm going to do is go into my master measures and I'm going to grab my rainfall. And I'm just going to drop it right on top of the combo chart and I'm going to display it as a bar. Okay, and you can see that we have the different measurements here where our bar chart is now depicting rainfall and our line is depicting the temperature. At this point, what I might want to do is choose my own color segments and visually relay the actual temperature information as a color scheme within my bar charts, and therefore I wouldn't need my line chart anymore. So what I'm going to do is go into my temperature. I'm going to right click the temperature, go into the master item settings, and you'll see we have a new tab called segment colors. And then I'm going to turn segment colors on, and then we have a variety of templates you can choose, gradients and classes. I'm going to choose the basic template and then add my own segments. So I'm going to add a couple of segments. Let's imagine I want the bars to display from cooler temperatures to warmer temperatures. And what I'll do is maybe we'll use uh, blue to indicate a cool temperature, and then yellow, and then orange, and then eventually red. And then we can adjust our thresholds, as you see here, either using percentages or fixed values. And then for each of these, I'm going to actually create them as gradients so the colors blend nicely into each other. And then I'll click Save. Now we've set that up and now to enable this within my chart, I'm going to go to appearance and then under colors and legend, you'll notice we have auto colors turned on. I'm going to shut off auto colors and then I'm going to select colored by measure. And by default, we're going to use what's called library colors. If I turn off library colors, it uses our default color schemes that we have available here. But library colors basically means using the master item library settings, just like I set up here. And now you can see the colors within the bars are indicating the temperatures for those months. So at this point, I can go into data and we can remove the actual temperature measure. And now we have both measures being depicted one by size and one by color. The next new feature I'd like to share with you is our new density map layer, also known as a heat map. This type of layer makes the most sense when you want to summarize location activity that can be considered very dense. In other words, instead of plotting individual points or bubbles that may overlap one another and possibly hide various bits of information, the density layer takes this into consideration and displays multiple occurrences in the same or similar area using color segments that correspond to the concentration of those points. So the more or less points in a particular area the colors or the intensity of the colors will change or form a pattern, indicating a higher level or a lower density or concentration. So though not particularly a cheerful example relating to crime statistics in Chicago, the density layer shows the number of incidents that occurred within a specified distance, with blue and green being the least, and those that are more spread out, and red and yellow showing more frequent occurrences that are closer to one another. So if I was visiting this particular location, I would most likely stay away from East 63rd and East 71st Street, for example, in order to reduce my risk of becoming a victim of a particular crime. So let me create this and show you how simple it is. So within my app, my data has been loaded. I'll give you an example of the data set. You can see here the latitude and the longitude columns have coordinates that are fairly close to each other. And you can see this by the indication of the digits within the coordinates. Now back at the map, 
I'm going to select layers, add a layer, add a density layer, and then add the dimension. In this case, my location parameter, which is going to be the longitude and latitude field. And then you can see the adjustments that it's made. And by default, it used this particular density scale. And then you can make some adjustments within the weight and radius. So for example, instead of pixels, we can say feet. And then we can make the adjustments such as 200 feet, 430 feet, 1600 feet, etc. until it looks about right where you would like to display that concentration. Now to change the coloring, we can go to colors, turn on custom segment colors, and then you could adjust your segments accordingly by removing limits or adding percentages, and then you can change the colors that you wish, remove the gradients, etc and even change the opacity. And that's all you need to do. I hope you enjoyed learning about these new features. Please be sure to check out these other great resources to learn more about Click and ClickSense. And please engage with us by asking questions and leaving comments where this video was posted. We value your opinion and we want to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.